You said something which was, um, when you wake up in the morning, you don't ask yourself if you're happy. Oh, completely. But what's funny about that was a lot of your, um, a lot of that kind of like masculine, um, like self-help yeah. um, is for men. Yeah. But as a woman, I find that really helpful. Because you said, because you said um, women just want to be happy. They yeah. just want to wake up and feel happy. Yeah. But you said, no, wake up. And just, what did you say? Wake up at, yeah, so the, am my, I creating something or am I doing? Yeah, yeah. So, so the basic premise is that the paradigm of happiness is, is completely misunderstood. I believe that. Because people always say to me, oh, well, you have all this money, Tate, but are you happy? I say if I'm going to be like, no. Like, I guess what they're hoping I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm like, bro, I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the bus. No, but the point is the whole paradigm of happiness is, is largely misunderstood. And we talk about happiness in society as if it's the most important metric. And I'd actually argue that it's not an important metric at all. And it's also really, truly amazing how what you define in your mind, the limits you set in your mind of what happy is and what happy isn't, becomes very, very true. So I watched a very interesting documentary that's about colors. And colors. It was, colors. Yeah. And it was a tribe in Africa that used different words to describe colors. So to them, blue and yellow are the same color, same word, right? And also, these two very different shades of green. And I'm talking about like grass and a leaf, like basically the same shade of, shade of green. They're completely different colors. So when they showed them blue and yellow and they said, can you tell the difference? They're like, no, it's the same color. I can't tell the difference between the blue and the yellow. Well, they couldn't the see color. the difference? They, they couldn't see it, even because in their, in their mind, it had one word. So because they grew up their whole life and it had one word, that, those two colors within that spectrum, to them, it's just like it's one color. They couldn't see the difference, just like we'd say different variants of pink, it's all pink. Mm -hmm. They couldn't really see the difference. Whereas the two very different shades of green, they're like, oh yeah, that's that, that's that. Uh -huh. Oh, they're completely different. So the point is, their own mental blocks, their own mental barriers, where they had mentally decided to put the brakes, controlled their reality. And people often talk about being happy, and what they do is they talk about being happy in the same way a child in their very giddyish Christmas morning happiness. You know, like, hee hee hee, I'm happy, I'm happy. That's never gonna be long lasting. That's gonna be temporary. If you were like that all the time, you wouldn't even get anything done, mm -hmm. right? You wouldn't even be a mature adult. So the idea that you're out here searching for that feeling permanently is asinine and immature. That is certainly happy, sure. But I've changed the paradigm of where happiness is. For me, anything above distraught is happy. Mm -hmm. Besides three or four monumentally destructive events that are gonna happen throughout my life, like a loss of family or something, unless I really, really feel down, I'm happy. So if I wake up, it's not I'm thinking if I'm happy or not. If I'm not devastated, I'm happy. It's, it's black or white. If it's not black, it's white. So even if I wake up and I'm furious and I'm stressed and I'm pissed off and I've got much to do, I'm still happy. I've decided I'm happy. My happiness barrier isn't this little giddy-ish at the top. My happiness is everything besides feeling distraught. That's how I've designed it in my mind. So I describe myself as a happy person and I, and I don't really put much merit on my feeling of the day. I've got things to do, I'm an adult, I get my shit done regardless of whether I'm super happy or slightly less happy. I'm still happy and I still perform and that's it as a whole. So when I meet guys who go, oh, I wanna be more happy. I'm like, bro, that is a stupid, destructive way to try and live your life. To constantly self-analyze and compare your happiness to how happy you were at another period, and how you're gonna get happy again, trying to get to the top one percentile of happiness. It's, it's stupid, it's not real, right? Do you understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, I agree with you, but I think what's funny is that a lot of this um, kind of advice is given to men, and you'll say like a woman doesn't need it, but I find a lot of value in this advice. That's... I prefer men... So they say that women give really bad advice, right? Yeah. They say they give terrible advice. I don't necessarily agree or disagree, but I, I seek out advice that men give to other men for myself. Good, good, because... I think that a lot of the advice that men give to other men is going to be harsher and more logical mm. and less emotionally led. But, but I say this all the time to guys who message me and say they're not happy. I say two things. I say, firstly, you shouldn't be measuring or be concerned with how happy you are. Shouldn't be something that's in your mind or something you're going to think about. Right? You've got other things to think about and other things to do. That's the first thing. The second thing is, so the first thing, the fact that you will sit there and self-analyze yourself to determine how happy you are out of a score of 100 is already a mental failure. That's a failure. You should be busy. You yeah. shouldn't cross your mind. The fact you have time to sit there and go, how happy am I today? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm only this much. Maybe I should be happier. That, that, that's already a mess up. The second thing is, and this is the truth, most of you, in fact, the large majority of you, don't deserve to be happy. Because they haven't done the work it requires to be happy. Yeah. You're not a man of genuine excellence in every human metric. You don't deserve to be happy. You're sitting at your computer with your board ape and your NFTs and $4 million, but you're fat and you're boring and you stink. 
and you expect yourself to be happy. You don't deserve to be happy. You don't deserve it. You haven't worked for it. Beauty lies on top of the mountain, my friends. You have to climb it. You have to get all the way up there to see the peak and its amazing view. Let me tell you something. I'm happy because all I've done is suffer. That's all I've ever done is suffer. This is how I got here. Suffer. My life's been nothing but suffering and trauma. That's how I got here. That's why my that's why my worldview is so brilliant. That's how I can wake up and as long as no one has a gun to my head, I am happy because I have suffered. You, ladies and gentlemen, haven't suffered enough. And if you haven't suffered, you're never going to be happy. Happiness lies atop a mountain. If it's just laying all over the floor and anyone can pick it up, it has no value. People's entire mental model is skewed. You're, you're a crypto guy, right? You believe in NFTs. NFTs, the whole point of them is that there's one. It's the scarcity that provides the value. If things are not scarce, there's no value to it, yeah. right? So it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's financial. It doesn't matter if it's even a good body, right? The fact that a guy has big arms, the reason that has value is because it's rare. If every dude naturally had big arms by default, it wouldn't have a value. So you're talking about happiness as if it should just be laid all over the floor. If everyone could pick up happiness without trying, you still wouldn't be happy because it wouldn't have value, and you'd be aiming for a new, you'd be looking for a new attention of happiness. You'd be looking mm -hmm. for something else. You'd just raise the paradigm. And people who are out here trying to find happiness without trauma and suffering, those are the guys who get addicted to drugs, alcohol, all this crap, but they're trying to find temporary happiness. You're gonna find happiness through pain. That's where happiness comes from as a man. And I'm not, I know you say you take some of my advice, et cetera, et cetera. I love but, male advice. Yeah, perfect. But it's the struggle yeah. that adds the value to things. The reason I'm gonna love my cars so much is because I had nothing and now I have them. Walk nine miles. I walk nine miles. Now I get to do it in a Lambo. It's beautiful. If I was born into money and was just given a Lambo for my birthday, I wouldn't even appreciate it. Yeah. That's the reality. So most of you men out here don't even deserve happiness. You come to me talking about happiness you don't deserve. And you know you don't deserve it because you're a coward and you're lazy and you're weak. You don't deserve happiness. It's good you're unhappy. That's your own mind telling you you need to do more. Because if you were genuinely, genuinely making an impact on the world and exerting your entire masculine force out into the universe, if you were genuinely doing that, you'd find happiness. Mm -hmm. So if you're sitting there feeling depressed, it's because you know you're lazy. You know you're not working very hard. I don't want to rant on your podcast. No, it's good. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. it really, it's just like the whole idea that a good doesn't exist without evil, right? So good doesn't exist without bad. Yin and yang. 100%. Yin and yang, light and dark. We, we don't want to feel, what's the exact saying? We all love the sun, we don't want to see the rain, but you can't have a rain. Uh, no, I've not heard this I can't remember. We all love the sun, we don't want to feel any pain, but you can't have a rainbow without a little rain. Something like Something. that. Something like that. But no, this is as old as human time, right? And the whole people, especially men, if you have this paradigm in your mind that you should just be happy by default, without trying, without working, without any kind of struggle, without any negatives in your life, and you're just going to be a happy person, and you're always just going to be laughing and giggling in the top 1%, that's asinine. Mm -hmm. It's not real. It's just, it's just stupid mentality to have. I don't care how happy you are. You have work to do. If any man comes to me and he's looking for guidance, I say, I don't, I, I don't really care how happy you are because you're fat. You got work to do. Come talk to me when you have a six pack. Otherwise, I don't care. You have too much to get done to be talking about happiness. Most of you men out here have so much to get done before you talk about happiness. It's amazing to me how little work the majority of people out here are doing. Mm. I, like you're a full grown man living in a transitionary period of, of humanity where the entire financial system is broken and trillions of dollars are created from the sky and you don't have a single million? 